Hey guys, what's up, Jack Ruger, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial on how I make my um, Cinema 4D YouTube banners. So, first thing I do, I obviously load up my Cinema 4D. And this is where we all get things set up. So, start off, we need the resolutions. I have a save, uh, how I've done my resolutions. So, I made uh, resolutions, all that. Uh, 1546 by 423 as you can see it's a template that usually on any computer uh, on seeing the banner on YouTube this is for my channel um, in this region right here well from here around to here they would usually just see this so that's why I keep the resolution too and so let's go back on uh, it's important um, you can call it whatever you want, I never really call it any name. Put it on Alpha Channel so it would um, delete any background even if you have a physical sky. And I think that is everything, I never really have anything more complicated than that. I think it's all, it's all good in my opinion. So yeah, uh, let's position that. I like this view best. Okay, so uh, I might as well make my own banner and uh, I'll show you how it looks. So, at the moment we need to pick two colours, so my favourite colours are obviously going to be red and blue. So let's get the blue and we get the red. Okay, and we also need a more, <laughs> more graph. So more graph, uh, more text. What this is, is like 3D text. It's better than the regular text which is found in here. Yeah, I don't like uh, that text because you can't really mess around with many settings and colours and it's complicated, extrude denerving it and all that. I prefer more text to be honest. So uh, we can insert the colours by just dragging and dropping them. Okay, and I also like to play around with the selection, but before we do that we need to go to the caps and go down to fillet cap. These are my favourite. Uh, cat things, if you call them. Okay, uh, go to the last texture. No. <laughs> and yeah, mess around with that. Maybe if you don't like the colour, you can just switch it around and make sure you delete the C1. That's a selection code. And C1 on this. That's a lot better, in my opinion. And also, if you want a different sort of like font, you go down to Object and you select your font. Let's see what font I have. I've downloaded a bunch of uh, different fonts. In my opinion, I like Hyperspeed. It's cool. This is uh, the font I've done for Yasu's banner. Okay, so. What do you do next? Now, you can do anything with the text at the moment. <laughs> uh, you can do anything with the text. He is so disruptive. I'm kidding. And so, with the text, you can. Uh, I like to run a plugin called Fawzi, uh, which cuts up all the text um, from polygons into different sort of like parts. And you can select how many pieces you want to be cut up. Uh, in the each letter that is. So if I set it to 15, 15 parts from one letter will be cut up and the next 15 and so on. So um, let's have it down to 24. 24 is a decent amount. And as you can see it looks cool and it also will give you different texture. What am I doing? Yeah, okay, before you do this, I'm an idiot, make a copy of the text you want to make it look special. And just make two different things over here. So let's have the typical red and typical blue, and I will make it as a glow. I'll make them glow just so the pieces will glow that are flying at the text. So, let's drag them into here. Let's just delete these. That looks a bit weird, so let's uh, quickly replace these. So, 
and you must see that the text also glows. Um, because that's slightly avoid. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> I'm not really going to explain this. In my first ever tutorial. All right. So now what we need to do is go to more text. We go to plugins, execute last plugin, which was the 4Z plugin, and we break it up. All right. Also, if you want to un undo any mistakes, hit Control Z, and then. Yeah, the mistakes are beyond there. So now we need to get these. Um, let's see, as as you can see, that each letter was broken up to 24 pieces, and we need to tick off these boxes so we can play around with the settings. So now we go back to more graph. We go to random in the effect selection, and you can easily see that um, text. You know what? Oh, I don't think that has been selected to all of them, no. So, if that has happened to you, and it just happened to me right now, just drag um, the random vector into the vector column. So, right there. So, that looks weird. And <laughs> so, you can um, play around with the vector strengths. 100 isn't the max. As you've been seeing in some of my other videos, 100 is not the max. Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks nice and spread out. Okay, and let's just draw it back because it's a bit, of, a bit obnoxious. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, and you can see behind it, it's all glowing, so that's awesome. Now let's go to the text here and go and insert my username. Sweet. In fact, I kind of messed up here because um, I made the text text um, for seed. So what I'm going to do, I am going to highlight all this. I'm going to scale and let's see. All right, that's cool. Let's just scale. It. There we go. All right. I think we could have done one more pieces, but I'm not going to complain now, it's just a tutorial. And that, at the moment, is the text. Some bits are getting in the way, so you can always just mess around and draw it back if you want to. Oh yeah, also, right click um, to move, scale, or rotate. Play around with these three options if you're new, like I am. Alright. And now. That bit is done, so the text is done. Now, if you want to insert your own Minecraft skin, yeah, um, I have a special folder, Cinema 4D. Um, this is Weird Lines, um, Steve Rig. Yeah, this is the free version. I tend to use the free version more than the paid version. I think that the free version is more simple because if you have the paid version, you insert that, you see a bunch of like buttons and slides and everything you don't want to play with. So that's a bit weird. So, uh, I have the free version. I tend to use this one, to be honest. Okay. Also, uh, if you want to keep things in region, uh, just for example, like you see these black lines around here? Yeah, if these um, are out of region, you see they'll have the face of cut off because of the black lines. So make sure you keep these are all in region. But you can cut out some 4 z bits, it'll still look okay. Alright. So, uh, at the moment, as you can see, it's a little Steve skin, and um, I haven't got my own skin selected. You scroll down and go down to custom skin, then you can find your skin. Also, if you want to find your own skin, uh, check out Skin Viewer. I don't know if this Skin Viewer is still a thing. You can use Skin Stealer. You guys already heard of it. So you can search up your own skin, and then right click and hit save skin. I've already got mine selected down into Minecraft skins to set for a folder. And I've recorded my accurate me, because it's accurately really look like me. So yeah. Alright. So we've got this all figured out. And if you want to position them, we just click on the little um, person icon. And I tend to mess around with the limbs more. You can mess around the head. 
Feel free to mess around the head. You can make him look up, look down, look, shake his head around. Do anything you want. He's like, oh my god, what's up there? Okay. That looks a bit weird now. <laughs> Alright. So. Let's uh, position him. So maybe I want to put like a sword in his hand. Or some uh, that. Do you actually want to save the view? Because I think this is actually a pretty good view. Click on this little camera button up here, and you and that saves the viewpoint. Okay. And so you can just mess around with his arms with the X, Y, and Z axis um, arrows, and that's uh, good. Maybe. Actually, I'm not going to put this on the side, but it would be a good demonstration. And well, I guess you can some of you guys have really seen my tutorials, but maybe I can do something like this. And just fold up his hands, or his arms quickly. This is a little technique that I taught myself. Okay. And then we can go to the elbows and just twist them a bit. This will hurt in real life, just noticed. <laughs> Alright, and then we set up the hands again and we just uh, draw them out. Mine needs to like play with them a little bit, but until you get the right um, things. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Just lift the hand up a bit and draw it out. Alright, so that's cool. And uh, play around the legs. At the moment with this rig, it seems to invert uh, this leg, and then this leg usually gets stuck into place. So if I move around, so say if I uh, move my leg around like there, for example, and then I render it, the leg is still straight. So it's a bug at the moment with the skin and uh, the rig. But usually that's not much of a big deal. Um, so yeah, you can also play around, well, play around with this leg, because this is fine. Yeah, you can uh, bend it, you can turn it like we've done with the arms. There we go, like that. Looks pretty cool. Alright, and it looks pretty cool rendered. Okay, and also, if you want to die down the glow a bit, because the glow is a bit obnoxious, glow is a glow, and you can play around with the arrows. You can also increase the glow because 100 and 500 is not the maximum. You can also include the radius. I can dial the radius down to 5%. So, so 5%, 5, 5, 5 centimeters. And uh, the glow for the blue is not as far as the red, as you can see. And. Yeah. Alright. Let's go down to cameras and go down to our main camera that we set. And there we go. That's what it looks like when it's all fully rendered. It looks pretty cool. I'm gonna have to be unashed. And yeah. I so said there's not many polygons over where the beginning of it is, so then we just sort that out. Alright, there we go. All good. So if you want that fully rendered out, it depends how you like it or how you do it. Yeah, in fact, let's zoom out a bit. I'm gonna get all the pieces in. See what I do. All right. So that looks good. All right, we've got all the pieces in, and everything, and then. You can just go to File, Save As. It's important you save it as a PNG unless you use Photoshop. Save it as a PSD. I use Paint.net um, usually, as it's just more basic. Uh, my than a tut. And yeah, so let's go down. I'll read that later. And let's find my banner tut. Where the frick I see it? It's usually my desktop. My desktop is so messy. Okay, there it is. And let's go down to P. 
paint on there. So I'll save it as paint on there. Now this is not the perfect resolution as you need it to be the template's resolution. So download the template that you would usually find. And I usually just copy it, I'll make a new layer and and then control V, expand the canvas. I'll go down to our previous layer, I get the one tool and I get rid of the background. I just press the little arrow up. In fact that wasn't much of a good demonstration. So uh before you do this, arrow up and usually you can just get around with all the polygons getting deleted and all that. And yeah. So now let's put my little thing down here. So this is what it looks like when it's all glowed. And then you can pretty much play around, make as many layers as you want to, play around a bit. I usually play around with the gradient tool, uh, just slightly. So yeah, red and blue are not my favorite colors ever. So we can go down to the third layer. And you can play around with the gradient tool. Right over here are my favorite selections, so I go for the linear reflected and make it look all swaggy. And yeah, you can mess around with that, you can twist it around and everything. You guys know what paint on is, I'm pretty sure. Alright. So that looks good. And you don't want to make it too detailed because remember the uh, the limit for a YouTube banner is two megabytes. I make it too detailed, otherwise they won't accept it, and you're gonna have to cut off pieces. So yeah, once you're done with that, save it as a PNG and flatten it so no more changes can be made. That all makes all the layers stuck together, and you're gonna have to be happy with that once you're done. So yeah. So that's what it will look like. Now if you guys are new to YouTube and you want to know how to, you know, what was it like, put the banner on, what you need to do is go down to the little pencil right here, go down to edit channel art, and then select a photo from your computer. Okay, and we need to find my channel art. All right. My banner tutorial, just uploading at the moment. And yeah, you see the max file size has to be 2 megabytes. So, this is what it looks like on a desktop, on a TV, and a mobile. So, that's cool. And you can also adjust the crop it if you want to, so you can mess around with that. I want to suggest if you mess around with that if you have the crop already set from PaintBotNet. So, select that. Boom, that's my video. <laughs> Right, it's just going to save, and there we go, it's all done. So yeah guys, I hope that um, has been a help to you in any way, maybe if you guys have a clearer view on how I make my banners, and yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed the video, I hope it's helped you in any way, shape or form, and yeah, I hope that you like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.